call it, coming out of Brampton, Ontario, Canada. Um, I've been making music coming on to four years now. Uh, my style isn't really centered around what's going on right now. I'm more of a, I would say, a traditional hip hop head. Um, me, I got my come ups just listening to all the greats and just knowing what I actually like generated and naturally went to made me the person I am right now. So like, whenever you hear like just the things that give you good vibes or just anything that takes an escape from your current time, that's how I'm gonna describe my music. And go sport RJ, like we were talking about last time, you're not into keeping up with the trends. You're I not into <laughs> <laughs> he's, not he's not into being little baby to oh. baby. He's not into all those you know he I'm not saying he don't like those yeah, cats. No, most definitely I can still I can still yeah. listen to that, but like it's not really But he's not into hey, oh my gosh, I gotta have forty six thousand insta followers. Oh my gosh, oh my <laughs> gosh. personally like I feel like when you follow trends, you become a product of your audience instead of you having a product for your audience. So like, I always like to convey the message, like know what you're doing it for, like know the cost of what you're doing it for and know how you want to bring yourself up. So yeah, and you're knowing how to do to bring yourself up. Now, what are your, bring us up to speed of your singles and the new EP or album that's dropping in two weeks. Is it an EP or an album? I won't say it's an album just because it's not like a fully mixed LP that I want to declare as an album because further down the line, I know I'm going to have a body of work that will be the first album, but this will be the first put together mixtape, 16 songs, um, the singles off of there are Radical, I have Like That out, and all the other singles I actually took down, but I have one that recently released called Stay. Um, this one's actually generating a lot of buzz just because now that like 20, 2019 has gone, passed through, 2020 is a new year, people are looking for something new. They stumbled upon this track, and it's something that I wrote not even just like recently but it's something that i wrote this time last year but it holds weight because the topics that i'm talking about anybody can relate to like okay. so what are the topics for example so for example that song um before uh, the first half of 2019 it was a really rough part of the year um i was just coming out of a relationship a toxic relationship uh things were looking bad i was getting i got kicked out my crib a b and c and i was like why do i feel this way and after that the main tagline for the actual song is like why do you make me want to go make me want to stay and it was just the same feeling across everything i was doing whether it be music like i just felt like i was lost i didn't know if i need to be here or not but then after that, as things turned, it started to change. So I feel like this song is for those people that feel like there isn't that way out, there isn't that path that you can take, but there is. Like, you can stay. You can stay to work on what you're doing. It doesn't matter if other people stays because, like, you have something within yourself that further down the line is going to mean more to others than it will to you because people always see the art for what it is down the line so so would you be talking about suicide and in your music like you feeling like you don't want to be here or would you be talking like you just feel stagnant in who you are as a person yeah it's kind of feeling stagnant like the first opening verse um when you're gone i feel nothing but empty holes in my chest and i can't explain the rest because the truth is my heart was a bulletproof vest with that yeah, it goes into what I was going through with my ex-girlfriend, but it also goes into what was going on with my family, all of that. And it all intertwines because like, I didn't know why I felt this way. So everything I put onto that paper, I discussed. And it was like a message from me to me, but then I realized it was a message for me to others too.
because I feel like they can maybe take something from it. I just don't like that you put your personal, like your family in the, I don't like when you rappers do that, but <laughs> like your personal family, I don't think people need to know that, but why do you think rappers like to talk about bad relationships with their parents? See, I feel like that's very important because everything's not clear cut, everything's not happy go lucky all the time, like naturally you're gonna have conflicts no matter what but it's about how you deal with that me i'm not using it using my platform to bash my parents or bash anybody from before it's kind of just more for self-reflection it's more of me thinking about like okay how could i have gone about this a different way and then after that i find my outlet which is music so i feel like a lot of other rappers do the same thing because they don't really have anybody to talk to. Luckily, I do have a support group. I do have the people that are important to me, even one person right here. And because I do, I have the music and and them for reference. So like, I never want to hold back anything because I feel like that's a part of me that the audience needs to know too. So. All right. Okay. What do you want to say to the people that are listening to the music and they're waiting for this upcoming mixtape? What do you want to tell them? <laughs> Honestly, I want to tell them to you know, be ready. This mixtape has my heart and soul. Like, I think it really creates the basis for like who I am as a person and as an artist because I give you not only just like things that you can bop to, I give you conscious lyrics, I give you things that you can just vibe out to, just chill and relax. But I feel like what I put on this mixtape are all essentials just for you to be able to look at yourself and know that this can be done. There, ha there, there doesn't need to be an oversaturation and just like a certain particular sound just because you feel like a lot of people are gonna gain buzz from it, just like we were talking about before with the trends. So like with this mixtape, I try to stay far away as possible and just lock myself in, really just create from a wholehearted place. And when you listen to all the beats, you're gonna feel the same way. Like, it's just gonna be a nice smooth transition. And I really think that you guys, you guys should really give this a listen. Like, I'm really excited to give this to you guys. I've been holding it for a good year now, but it's time to let it go. It's time to let it go. <laughs> so, and I'm just setting the record straight. Mm. So. He's not keeping up with the trends like it's that he makes you think about your life. And again, I'm going to use that example. I'm in my car. Mm -hmm. Man, I smoke so much weed. I messed up my life. And I'm on drugs to the point of thy kingdom come. And what I mean is I'm smoking a lot of chronic, but it's not worth it. So his music's trying to say, listen... You don't have to do that. You don't have to keep up with the trends. You don't have to smoke the whole bunch of weed. You don't have to, you know, take all a whole bunch of Percocet and, you know, yeah. up in the club. You don't have to. Am I correct or am I correct. right? Because, like, yeah, there's a time and place for turning up. But, like, if that's what your lifestyle revolves around, then what does that really make you? Like, in my time, yeah, I may, I may smoke recreationally. But... If I do smoke, I am conscious of what I'm smoking on. I'm conscious of where I'm smoking, and I'm conscious of what am I doing it for, because a lot of people are using these different substances as a gateway just to let themselves go. And then after that, you see it translate to the music, because they don't really have much content to be talking about. It's either, um, I, I can curse, right? It's either bitches, fucking money, clothes, etc., etc. So now, when you're listening to all this, all these people are talking about the same thing. They can't all be living the same lifestyle. So who are you? When you hear my music, you actually get a sense for who I am as a person. And it actually reflects the fact that I'm mellow, the fact that I'm laid back, more relaxed. Um, even the subject matter, like, it may not be for everybody, but anybody can actually listen to it and take something from it, though.
do you think parents can listen? Can your parents Most listen definitely. to you? Okay. So what do you say to that? Like, let's say I'm in my 40s mm -hmm. and I have my son who loves hip hop music. And like, why are you listening to that trash? Yo, turn it off, man. Why are you listening? What would you say to that? Honestly, me, I hang out more with people that are older than me rather than people of the same age. And because of that, I'm grounded. Like, within all the networks that I've had, within all the places I've been, if I play my music, it's a universal standard that it takes them back. It's a nostalgic feeling. So, like, even if, like, let's say your dad has an appreciation for hip-hop. If he hears some of my stuff, he's going to think that it may have came out around those times, or he's going to be like, oh, this is a new person that I can really relate to because it takes me back to when I was th that age. And it's like, when you have music that is timeless, it'll speak for itself, and all generations will be able to relate to it. And I feel like that's where like, a lot of the grades come in. Like You see uh, Bob Marley, you listen to his music, and has that same universal standard to where everybody has a universal understanding of love. So whenever they hear his music, they're like, wow, we can all just sit back. Doesn't matter how old you are. I've seen babies bob to his tracks. I've seen old people bob to his tracks, middle-aged people. And it's just because they have that respect for him because he actually has a love for the art. And he's doing it because he knows that he yeah, I can make money off of this, but what's money and material things at the end? In the end? That doesn't really do much for you if the music's not backing it up. So, no, That's true, that's true, that's true. You want to throw out your platforms in case people forgot about you? Or there's new listeners that say, you know what, let me give this Ghost Boy RJ a chance. No problem. Um, so it's Ghost Boy RJ on YouTube, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter... Um, if you want to stream any of my stuff, I'm on Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, all streaming platforms. My project, Ghost, self-titled, will be out February 14th. Um, so make sure that your alarms, your, your, your clocks, your calendars, all marked. Um, it's going to be a special day. And it's on Valentine's Day, so it's day uh, well, love. For Valentine's Day, you think people are going to be bumping the hip-hop on Valentine's Day? You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I do have, I do have one one song of just me singing. However, Ooh. yeah, it's an R&B. Okay, an all right. So you like to take it down. <laughs> <I really> wanna... <laughs> that Chris Brown vibe, eh? yeah. Okay. I mean, it's kind of you. You hear it. It's kind of more of a a more sound that's true myself. But like, the reason why I put it on Valentine's Day is because it's also a gift to my girlfriend because she's been with me through the whole process. So. It's kind of like going into it. She knew everything that was going down the behind the scenes, even like me just doing random verses. She would be there. So her birthday is four days after Valentine's Day also. So she has two gifts. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and two it's gifts definitely from, her, uh, from you, right? Go yeah. smart RJ. Okay, okay. <laughs> so he loves his girlfriend and that is okay, all right? <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good joy to get to know you again. Any final things you want to say to us in closing? Um, I hope you guys are ready for Ghost Boy RJ. Uh, the takeover is coming this year, 2020. I'm glad to be on the show again. Um, it's always a good time talking. And yeah. All right. For CJRU, I'm Donovan LaCroxy. I want to thank rapper Ghost Boy RJ for making a comeback. All right. How'd you